Hi, this is Tarun Mittal. Let us continue with the second part of cardiac anatomy on CT. We have already looked at the anatomy of the heart, mediastinum, and the vascular structures as seen on the axial plane. Now we will go a bit more into details of the chamber anatomy, particularly on the workstation software, as well as look at the segmentation of the left ventricle. Unlike most of the body where we can describe the different structures in the orthogonal planes, such as the axial, the coronal, and the sagittal, it is difficult to describe the heart in these planes. The reason for that is the orientation of the heart where the apex is lying to the left, anteriorly as well as inferiorly. Due to this, the heart is best studied in its own axis, which are the long axis and the short axis. Planes. Let us switch on to the workstation to understand these planes better. Okay, so I have loaded a cardiac CT angiogram which was performed as a triple rule out procedure, and hence we can see most of the chest in this study besides the heart. So, what is the long axis of the heart? If we draw a plane which is passing from the posterior surface or the base of the heart to the apex of the heart roughly parallel to the ventral septum. That would be represent the long axis of the heart. And a plane that would be perpendicular to the long axis plane would be the short axis plane of the heart. Let us now see how we make the different long and short axis views of the heart. If I center in the left ventricle and then rotate one of the crosshairs to make it parallel to the ventricular septum and make it pass through the posterior aspect of the heart to the apex of the heart. What I have done here is that I have made this crosshair pass through the center of the left atrium and left ventricle to make a long axis two chamber view of the left heart. If on this view, if I center my crosshair roughly in the center of the mitral valve, and then rotate the crosshair to pass to the apex of the left ventricle. What I'm doing on the bottom right panel is creating a long axis four chamber view of the heart. So these are the two most commonly used long axis views. Now by creating these views, the software has already done a view that is perpendicular to the long axis views of the heart and this view on the top left corner is the short axis view through the heart. Now on CT, we can scroll through these, any of these planes for that matter, to study them in more detail in terms of anatomy and different abnormalities that we may see. Let's look at the anatomy of the cardiac chamber in more detail. So starting from the left ventricle, so two main structures we have in the left ventricle. One is the papillary muscles, which we can see here. And the second are the mitral valve leaflets. <clears throat> Let us look at these structures in short axis view. So here we have the two sets of papillary muscles on the short axis plane. So the group of papillary muscles on the anterior aspect are called the anterolateral papillary muscles and the one posteriorly are called the postromedial group of papillary muscles. And there are further fine papillary muscles or trabeculations lining the uh, inner ball of the myocardium of the left ventricle as well. Now these papillary muscles are attached to the mitral valve leaflet edges via thin structures called the cordy tendony, which you can just about see there, and perhaps better on the long axis two chamber view there. In terms of mitral valve, it has got two valve or leaflets. The anterior leaflet is supposed to be convex in structure, while the posterior leaflet is concave in shape. Now, myocardium is normally up to 12 millimeter in thickness. When we evaluate the myocardium, we are looking for any abnormal areas of hypertrophy or increased thickness and we are looking for abnormal areas of myocardial thinning. We also assess the degree of enhancement of the myocardium. 
So normally the myocardium should be enhanced uh, like any other soft tissue in the body. Now coming to the right ventricle. So right ventricle is a more trabeculated ventricle. So if we go down towards the apical third of the right ventricle, we will see the trabeculations better. So these are all the trabeculations of the right ventricle. Now some of these trabeculations, they pass from the interventricular septum to the anterior free wall of the right ventricle. And one of these, which is the largest one, is also called the moderator band. So if we go up, perhaps you'll see it here. That's called the moderator band here. And moderator band is one of the morphological features of the right ventricle. Now the valve of the right ventricle is a tricuspid valve. As the name suggests, it has three leaflets. The leaflets of a normal tricuspid valve are quite thin and hence barely visible on the CT scan. Let's try to see if we can see them on this image, on this scan, just about here. Now, one of the typical features of the tricuspid valve is that the septal leaflet of the tricuspid valve is more apically placed towards the apex compared to the anterior leaflet of the mitral valve. And the two are separated by the membranous septum, which is part of the ventricular septum. The other morphological feature of the right ventricle is the moderator band, which you've already seen. The morphological feature of the left ventricle is presence of the two sets of papillary muscles and a bicuspid mitral valve. So the atrioventricular valves, they belong to their ventricles. Now let's look at the right atrium. So right atrium, as we know, has the draining veins. So we on inferiorly, we have the IVC. Superiorly, we will have the, if I place them in the orienter, superiorly, we will have the SVC. And let me reset these images and show you here. So we have the SVC going up and inferiorly besides the IVC, we will also have the coronary sinus. This is a coronary sinus. And this is the IVC here, posterior to the coronary sinus. So we can see the coronary sinus in the short axis plane better. So if I do a short axis plane, there you go. So that's the coronary sinus vein, which is draining into the right atrium. Now, right atrium has two parts. One is a smooth wall part, which is the proper body of the right atrium. And then you have the more rougher part of the right atrium, which is the appendage itself. So the appendage contains the pectinate muscles, which are not very much visible on CT scans. And then we have this structure, which you can see here, which is called the crista terminalis. The left atrium, again, has two components. One is the larger smooth-walled body of the left atrium, in which we have the draining pulmonary veins. And then we have the small triangular structure called the atrial appendage, which you can see here, which is the harbinger of thrombus in patients with large left atrium. So normally there are four pulmonary veins. So on this axial image, we can identify the left inferior pulmonary vein. If we go up, we will see the left superior pulmonary vein. Similarly, on the right side, we have the right superior pulmonary vein, which is coming here. And then we have the right inferior pulmonary vein. We can see these pulmonary veins nicely on the 3D images. And I'll just zoom this up. So here, this is the apex of the heart. So the, this is the left side now. And we can see the marker has turned left on this. So on the left side, we have these left superior, left inferior pulmonary vein. On the right, we have the right superior and the right inferior pulmonary vein. Okay, so let's go back to the short and long axis images. And let us try to understand the segmentation of the left ventricle. So there is a standard international 17 segment 
model for naming different parts of the left ventricular myocardium. So in this model, the left ventricle is initially divided along the long axis into three parts, the basal third, the mid third, and the apical third. And lastly, you have the apex itself. Some people call it the apical cap. If we now look at the basal third of the left ventricle, the basal as well as the mid third of the left ventricle are divided by two diagonal lines, each of them passing through the superior and the inferior junction of the right and left ventricles. And these two lines, they divide the myocardium in the basal third into four segments. So this is the anterior segment. This is a septum or septal wall, inferior segment, and the lateral wall. Now, the septum and lateral wall are further divided by a horizontal line passing through the center into the anterior and inferior parts. So here we have the basal anterior segment, basal anterior septum, basal inferior septum, basal inferior segment, basal infralateral segment, and basal anterolateral segment. Now, similar division into six segments is done in the middle third as well. These segments as the mid anterior wall, mid anterior septum, mid inferior septum, mid inferior wall, mid inferolateral wall, and the mid anterolateral wall or segment. So again, we have the six segments in the mid third. In the apical third, however, so this is the apical third passing through the apical third of the ventricles. The left ventricle is divided just by the two diagonal lines. And here we have the apical anterior wall, apical septum, apical inferior wall, and the apical lateral wall. And the last segment is the apical cap itself or the apex. And this is the 17 segment model that is now commonly followed for CT, MR, and also for in echo as well as nuclear cardiology. And let us look at the pericardium here on the workstation. So you can see very clearly this thin structure surrounding the heart, particularly on the anterior aspect, superior aspect. This is the two, this is a pericardium containing the two layers within it, as explained in the first session. And again, you can see the pericardium here. And the layer of fat that's lying between the pericardium and the myocardium is the epicardial layer of fat. And the fat that lies outside the pericardium is the pericardial layer of fat. Let's quickly look at the anatomy of the mediastinum, which we have seen already on the in the first session. But let's just quickly go through it further. So we have the LVOT here. This is the aortic root with the aortic valve. And this structure here, this artery that's arising anteriorly is a right coronary artery. As you go up, we are going up above the aortic root into the ascending aorta. And here we see the left coronary artery arising from the left part of the aortic sinus or aortic root. This is the left atrium with pulmonary veins. We have the SVC here, the right atrial appendage, RVOT, which will be forming the main pulmonary artery. As you go up, we see the main pulmonary artery, the right branch of the main pulmonary artery, the left branch of the pulmonary artery. And if you remember, this is an important level at which we measure the size of the ascending aorta we check for the timing of the contrast arrival at this level, either in the ascending aorta or the descending thoracic aorta. And this is a level where we start our cardiac CT scan planning from. So as you go up, we will see the aortopulmonary window here. We still have the ascending aorta, the descending aorta, the SVC, different pulmonary vessels. And we go up into the aortic arch, the structure, the SVC, 
trachea, the esophagus. And one more structure to bear in mind is this structure, which is not opacified here. This is the azygous vein that drains into the SVC. Let me show this to you in a sagittal plane. So here we are. So if you look here in the SVC is uh, this structure and the vein that is joining the SVC from the posterior aspect above the left bronchus is the azygous vein. So let's go further up. Now, what we can see here, this is the first artery to arise from the arch is the brachiocephalic branch. The second branch is the left common carotid artery and the third is the left subclavian artery. In this patient, we can see there is some soft plaque in, at the origins of these arteries as well as some calcified plaque. Anteriorly, we can see there is a vessel that's joining this vessel on the right side. These are the two brachiocephalic veins, the left and the right, which will join together to form the SVC. So as we go up, we can see the brachiocephalic artery, which is here, dividing into the subclavian artery on the right and the right common carotid artery. And they will be going up further along the right aspect of the neck. This is the trachea in the center, in the midline. You have the two lobes of the thyroid gland. These, this is the left subclavian artery and this is the left common carotid artery. So this is in brief the anatomy of the vascular structures in the mediastinum, the trachea and the cardiac chambers. And also I've gone through the segmentation anatomy and nomenclature of the left ventricular myocardium. We will now proceed to the anatomy of the coronary arteries in the next section.